Okay, thanks so much to Chris Jensen for joining us. Oh, hold up my notes here. Um, Chris, Chris is the director of the Missoula International Airport. He has been for the past 15 years. I did not know uh, that he has his pilot's license. He's a licensed pilot since 1982, and he has a lot of awards here. Recipient of the State of Nevada Commendation Medal awarded by the Nevada National Guard. He was voted Airport Executive of the Year by the Northwest chapter of the American Association of Airport Executives in 2010. Um, he served on the board of directors for the Missoula Area Economic Development Corporation, the Missoula Convention and Visitors Bureau, and the Missoula Chamber of Commerce. He has twin boys who are 25, a daughter who's 17. He loves the outdoors, uh, raised in Nevada, but obviously been here at least the last 15 years. So we invited Chris because we were just kind of talking in our meeting here, like what's going on with the airport? And they said, let's find out who knows someone at the airport. And I said, oh, well, I do, because I've worked with Chris over the years uh, at my job at NBC Montana. So we thank you for joining us, Chris. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. And, and I have to say, you know, I've given a few presentations at the early hours of the morning over the years. And this, is has, this has to be one of the happiest groups that I've presented to. So it's kind of nice to see even, even on my computer screen. So uh, I appreciate you having me here. And I think uh, Jim, if we can, I guess I'll share my screen here and we'll see if this works. And if so, I'll try not to bore you too much with PowerPoint. We'll kind of zoom through this, but, uh, you know, be happy to answer questions or talk about anything else or share one liners, uh, if you'd like. Um, so first of all, can you all see my screen? Yeah. Okay. I got the thumbs up from Jim. So I'm going to take that as a yes that you can. And Maritza too, I see. So, uh, so I just want to go through this real quick. Like I said, I don't want to put you to sleep because obviously, uh, you know, these PowerPoint presentations can be painful sometimes, but I thought I'd just start out and kind of show you what's going on in our world. So this slide really just represents last year compared to this year, the top red line is really our, the national passenger numbers. Uh, so not Missoula, but the national passenger numbers. And you can see we were up around two and a half million passengers per day. Uh, and if you look at the bottom, you'll see that we're pretty consistently under a million. Um, in, in Montana, we're actually doing better than the rest of the country right now. So we're running at about 50% of normal. Uh, this time of year, we'd probably have 1,500 passengers per day each direction. So inbound and outbound. And we're running between six and 800 on any given day. Now. So we're actually in a little better position than the rest of the country. Um, whoops. This just shows our load factors and, and it kind of reflects what I was saying that we're around 50%. If you see this line, this represents us this year. This is where we would have been. Uh, this is where we were in 2019. And again, these are just kind of our total employment numbers by month. So you can see obviously summer months are our busiest months. And in July of last year, we were approaching 60,000 passengers. Um, this year, we were probably more in the 23,000 passenger range. So, um, you know, obviously we're down considerably from, from where we were. And then these are just some of the kind of the highlights in terms of air service that we're dealing with right now. Um, we, we see uh, about a 12% increase. So we're living in a little bit of a weird dichotomy here in Missoula right now. Uh, all across the country, you hear about airlines slashing their, their schedules and, and blocking seats. We've actually gained some seats compared to last year, which is a little bit unusual in the industry. Uh, so November, we we're actually up a little bit. Uh, December, we're down a little bit. Uh, in January, going forward, we're down a little bit. But those numbers are, are a little bit hard to, to decipher because the airlines are making changes so close in. So it used to be that they would build their schedules maybe six months in advance. Now, nowadays, we may see changes up to two weeks or within two weeks of the scheduled departure. And so, um, you know, it's, it's always hard to kind of know in, in these times exactly what our schedules are going to look like. Just some of the things, again, that dichotomy where airlines are slashing service and at the same time, we're announcing new service. So uh, Santa Ana, Orange County was our, was our 16th uh, nonstop destination we announced, I think a week or two ago. Uh, prior to that, uh, we announced San Francisco, San Jose and San Diego on uh, Alaska Airlines. And so, you know, again, where a lot of communities are losing service, 
we're actually gaining service. Uh, you know, the, the Santa Ana service was for Maritza just because she wants to go to Disneyland. She was very quick to, to, to point that out to me. So I'm happy to, you know, that we can meet individuals' needs. I, I, went, I wrote him right away. I love <laughs> She <that>. did. <laughs> so if you have any, uh, any of those out there, now I know Mr. Elander wants something to Florida. So I, I will tell you, honestly, we're working on something to Florida. I don't have any announcements today, but that's certainly been on our list of conversations with airlines. So, uh, you know, we continue to have those conversations. Actually, on uh, December 6th, I'm traveling to Dallas. I have a meeting with four different airlines while I'm there. And uh, so hopefully we'll have some additional announcements in the not too distant future. Uh, kind of just now getting into the terminal project and, and just wanted to give you, there's a lot of pictures here and I'll go through them pretty quick. Um, but I kind of wanted to give you an inside look at what's going on with the project. Uh, we're about a year away from completion. So good progress, we're under budget, we're on schedule. It turns out when you don't have airplanes, you don't have cars, you don't have people, it's pretty easy to, to construct something. And so we've actually made good use of the, the downtime, if you will, in our, in our passenger traffic. Um, so these are just kind of the different phases we're working on. The access road, what we call phase zero, uh, is essentially done with a small amount of paving. I'll show you some pictures. Uh, but we're, we're in good shape. And, and because of you know, winter now being here, we basically put the project, the remainder of it on hold. Uh, the vertical construction, if you've driven past the airport, you've seen the buildings going up. Uh, we're now doing a lot of the work on the interior of the building. And then you'll see uh, if in the pictures some of the interior work as we're going. And, and I'll talk a little bit about that as we go through the pictures. This is the parking lot again. The entryway is different now than it used to be. Uh, we have kind of a new loop road that increased our parking uh, spot, our number of spots. We were running up against uh, kind of the capacity of the lot. And so this gave us the opportunity to, to add about 350 more parking spaces uh, to the parking lot. I would tell you that today, uh, right now we have about 35 open spots. So people are getting on airplanes uh, during the holidays here. So that's, that's good news for us. Um, and, it, and it points out that we definitely did need to expand our, our parking lot. Just some aerial uh, photos of when we were doing the parking lot work. That's, that's, what it, whoops, that's what it looked like before. That's what it looks like today. And if you look up here in the right-hand corner, this is what we have left to, to pave and we'll finish that in the spring. Um, again, just some additional photos of kind of the work that we've done, all this new pavement out here. And, um, one of the additional things that we're gonna do is if you recall the exit lane plaza is right here. This is the old main entrance. We're actually gonna change the, the exit plaza, add two more lanes or there'll be a, four, a total of four and it'll be more central to the, to the overall parking lot. So it'll be a little more user friendly if you will in the end. Um, and again, just more aerial photos. This is that exit lane that I'm talking about that has the two the two booths today and the new one will be over here. We'll actually take advantage of the, uh, of the old entrance to the airport and that will become the, the new exit lane. And that kind of shows right where it'll go. Just moving into the interior, can I kind of zoom through some of these? The basement of the building is primarily the mechanical spaces, electrical, HVAC, plumbing. Uh, we do have TSA has some offices in there and our building maintenance staff has some offices in there. So these are all just pictures that kind of show you how the work is going on in the basement, how far along we are. You can see we're starting to have sheetrock in some of the spaces now, which is nice to see that the spaces are starting to be more defined. Um, and so again, just kind of a bunch of pictures. One of the other things that we're really excited about is the glass is now starting to go up on the front of the terminal. This is kind of a big milestone for us. Um, and if you've, if you've driven by recently, you can see that this is, this is uh, gone rather quickly. Uh, we were kind of surprised at the speed that the uh, contractor was able to place those. So that was a good thing. And here we are kind of with more of it complete uh, and different views of that. And this is just a generator building, not all that exciting, but the building has got backup generators. Um, bag makeup area in the bottom of the uh, terminal. So this is where when you drop your, so today, if you come to the airport, you have to take your bags to the TSA, if you recall, in the lobby. Uh, and then the TSA puts them on a cart and walks them uh, back to the airlines. And all of that will change. It'll be a very streamlined system. You'll take your bag to the ticket counter, 
drop it there and that'll be it. It'll be fed to the TSA and then it'll be fed out to the airlines where they'll load it on an airplane. And so this is all part of that space. Um, again, you can kind of just see some of the work going on in there. Now we're on the first level. So this structure right here is an escalator. So we're proud of the fact that I think in Western Montana right now, these will be the only escalators in the state with Herbergers, I think, shut down. Uh, so the escalators are actually installed. There's a one up, one down. And, and so uh, who would have thought that that would be such a big deal? But it's one of the things we hear most common, I think, when, we, when we're given tours of the building. And so we'll we actually think we'll have some kind of a big public unveiling and we've talked about doing some kind of fundraiser charity event where we ride the escalator for a dollar or whatever and we'll, we'll donate it to some worthy cause. But uh, anyway, uh, the project's going well. Chris, Chris. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. For some reason you're fading in and out. It's probably not... just me. It's early, you know, and I haven't had enough coffee yet. Oh, so okay. <laughs> I don't know, can you... Um, I mean, most of the time you're fine, but all of a sudden you kind of fade. All right. Well, I'll try to uh, wave at me if I start to fade, and I'll, I'll okay. And do so. Um, anyway, uh, just kind of again moving through the terminal. These are a lot of the airline spaces, uh, so they have obviously a lot of offices in here, and uh, so those are starting to be built out. This kind of this is now we're on the second level of the building, and one of the things I'll point out is the. The flooring, you'll see we're actually using polished concrete. So they've been, the contractor's now been in here polishing. It's hard to tell because there's still a lot of dust on it. But when that's all removed, it's, it's actually very beautiful. And, and uh, we're, you know, kind of proud of the fact that it's, it's cost effective, but at the same time, it looks really nice and it'll be easy to maintain. Uh, again, second level. So this will be uh, kind of the meet and greet area, if you will, and where the TSA checkpoints will be. Uh, there'll be a uh, black coffee roasters will have an area there and uh, we'll have uh, you know easy access from right above the ticket counters and, and so the kind of the idea behind the building is that it's intuitive we want everybody to be able to navigate it without having to read signs so when you are walking in from the parking lot you can look and see oh okay i know where the ticket counters are at the ticket counters i can easily see where security is and so we want this to be a very intuitive building, if you will. So again, just kind of looking at some of the spaces on the second level, um, this again would be uh, the black coffee roasters would be in this area and kind of in here would be the meet and greet area where all of the pass passengers exiting uh, from their flights would come out. So where you would meet somebody as they're arriving at the airport and, and also where you would send somebody off right before they go through security. So it's kind of a central hub to the airport, if you will. Um, again, this is, now this is looking down the concourse. So these are the gate areas. All of these windows look out towards Lolo Peak, uh, kind of to the south. And whoops, I got ahead of myself there. And um, this is all dynamic glass. So it'll actually tint throughout the day. It's all electrochromatic. And so it's kind of cool because we don't have to have blinds. We don't have to cover it in at the same time. It maintains the beautiful views that we have. Just more pictures. This is, you know, kind of one of the views out of the front of the building that we that we'll see that uh, this is what arriving passengers will be greeted with as they come out of security. So very nice kind of surrounding hills. Unfortunately, it was kind of a hazy day when this picture was taken. Uh, now we're on the third level. So the third level is the administrative level. Uh, so where our offices would be located. It's going to be a very nice space for our staff. We actually have a deck. Decks have become a kind of an important part of our existence. We had one of the first decks in the country on the current terminal. And it was so popular that, of course, we put a deck on, on the new terminal. Uh, and we actually included one in our office space as well. So we'll be able to go out there and work outside and take advantage of the beautiful scenery that we have. Um, again, just more pictures. These are office spaces on, on the admin level. I'm just gonna kind of zoom through these. Here's some of our happy staff excited that the building is, is moving along so nicely. And now some exterior pictures. Um, and so you can kind of see the windows going up. This is looking 
this would be a, the west face of the building. So the aircraft would be parked out here on the concourse around this concourse, and then kind of the interior functions of the building are in here. So our goal is to have the building completely closed up by actually by today. And so we're very close to having that. They'll actually start putting heat in the building so they can work through the winter. And so we're very close to, to having that done um, today. And so that's, we're right, again, right on schedule. This is the new deck that'll be off of security. So there's the bar and restaurant you can't tell from this picture are kind of right in this behind the deck. And this will be an outdoor deck with a fireplace. So you'll be able to in the winter time sit out here um, and, and enjoy a cup of coffee or a beer uh, before you get on your flight or after you arrive. Just more exterior pictures. This is kind of just a kind of progressive, you know, where we were. This actually was in September. So you can see what it looked like then. And this is essentially what it looked like about a week ago. So we've made a lot of changes there. And again, some just some drone shots of the of the building, so you can kind of see the exterior of it. It's about 167,000 square feet, so uh, pretty good sized, but also designed so that we can easily expand it as needed. So this is that concourse where the aircraft would be parked. In the future, as we grow we can just push this con uh, concourse out further and we can add additional parking positions. In addition, we have a plan that would move to build, so build out to the east as well. So we, we can expand out to about 20 gates. This, uh, this phase plus the first phase over here will give us eight gates. And we currently have two jet bridge served gates with, uh, with two more ground parking positions. And just a few more photos and I swear I'll be done. So this is the last part of the presentation and this is just kind of what we have left to put out to bid. So we're now bidding furniture. So our board yesterday awarded the hold room seating. This is what it's gonna look like. Um, I don't know if you can tell it has power in it. That seems to be a big thing nowadays for us. Uh, it should be comfortable and functional. We have armrests between each and every seat, so you don't have to elbow your neighbor necessarily. Um, and so we're happy to, to get that uh, project or that part of the project awarded yesterday. This is just kind of what it looks like in place. This is actually uh, Eagle Vale Airport, uh, but it's the same seating that they have. Just some more pictures. Um, and then kind of these are the things that we have left to bid out. So we have in December, so this next month, we'll bid out the temporary baggage claim and then our office furniture and some of the IT network kind of stuff for the building. And that really is that. Uh, this is, I stole this slide from, from a presentation yesterday for the board. And so we, we give them a financial update. But what I would tell you, two, two things that are important to know is number one, there's no tax revenue of any kind involved in this project. So we're funding it through user fees. We're funding it through grants from the federal government uh, and through um, passenger facility charges. So, so again, that's another type of user fee. Um, so that's, that's the one thing. And the other part of it is First Security Bank. So we will have some debt and First Security Bank, a local bank is our, our finance partner and they've been amazing partners, but we have yet to even draw on that debt. We have capacity of, to draw up to $35 million. We've been able to, prior to the COVID, we were actually cash flowing the project because we were in such a good financial position because of our growth. We ultimately will have to draw on the debt, but as of this point, we have yet to do so. And so that's it. This is the kind of the final slide. So I'll shut up unless you have questions for me. I have a, I have a question there, Chris. Yeah. Um, now, um, I, I was wondering about, uh, what do you call it, um, handicap access, uh, elderly folks uh, who have a hard time climbing stairs, you, you do, uh, and other things, uh, finding the bathrooms. Are, are there any kind of um, handicap uh, support or elderly support to parts of your design? Yeah, so there is, that's been an important part of our uh, kind of our, our design efforts. 
So we have redundant systems. We obviously have stairways, we have escalators, but we also have elevators to every level as well. And so they're all, uh, I, I should have pointed them out in the pictures, but they're all kind of centrally located too. So you'll easily be able to, to go from any level in the building uh, without having to go up or down a single stair. <clears throat> You know, if stairs are a challenge, you'd be able to, to go to any, any level of the building. Uh, we've also been meeting, in fact, we have a meeting um, next week with, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of the name of the group right now. Uh, it's, it's a dementia group, but I can't think of the, the actual name of the group. But we are trying to uh, make sure we consult with people, the users that are, that are gonna be affected by this. Uh, I, I think that's a, a Dementia Friendly Missoula. That's a Dementia Friendly Missoula. That's the group, I think. That might be it, yeah, that, that could be right. One of the other things I would tell you, and I see May on here, so I, should, I have to call her out a little bit. So May is one of our, our volunteers at the airport. And so we have some very nice people that like to come out and, and spend time and visit with passengers. And, and May has been with us for quite a while. I, I'm not sure now, how many years has it been, May? Um, but, but yeah, so we'll have, we'll have people there that will help you know, passengers and we'll have a building that is definitely designed around being uh, handicap accessible and, and easy to navigate. And my question's kind of, this is uh, Ken and Terry Egan. My question's kind of a follow-up to Jim's because I work with Jim on dementia friendly Missoula. And also, you know, the, the thing for people with handicaps is those um, family restrooms or, you know, restrooms where you can take a person in and you know, just signage being really good uh, in the airport. You know, we're you know, yeah. So that's at a, those kind of things are happening. Yeah, thanks. That's a that's a great question. I'm glad you brought that up. So yes, we will have family restrooms. We'll have uh, kind of a mix of restrooms. So there'll be family restrooms. There'll be uh, individual restrooms, which we call Jack and Jill restrooms, which will will be single stall lockable uh, spaces. Uh, and then we'll have, you know, kind of the normal, traditional, bigger restrooms. We also have nursing, uh, nursing spaces, nursing rooms. Um, or, you know, I guess I'm not sure what the proper term is, but uh, and then we finally have a service animal, a service animal restroom too. So we actually have a space inside the building where if somebody has a service animal, they'll be able to take that uh, service animal. We actually have a flushing floor, if you believe. <laughs> and it looks like grass, it's AstroTurf, actually has a fire hydrant and the entire floor flushes <laughs> when, when, the, when the animal's done using it. So we've tried to incorporate all of those types of things into the building and they're in multiple locations too, by the way. So going back to the easy to find uh, part of your question, yes, they, the signage should be good, but there's also multiple locations throughout the building where you can find those facilities. I was going to ask that same question. Uh, are they on? Are they all on the ground floor, or are they on on all levels? So we have really? multiple. Yeah, some on the ground, some on the second level, and some on the third. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <you> <laughs> yeah, we'd love. Yes. We'd love yeah. to. It's oh. funny, that's, that's one of the things we kind of joke about it, but we've actually gone to a number of airports to look at them just to make sure we get that right and, and make sure we talk to the people that are going to take advantage of those and make sure that it's you know, something that the animals are actually going to use. And so there's a lot of effort that goes into that. Yeah. Hmm. Well, how about planting some trees out on the one side and fencing them in for us old guys? We like trees, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming we're not talking for restroom facilities. We're just talking for scenery, right? <laughs> Jack, do you have a question? You have to unmute yourself. What are you doing? Is it, sure. is it, uh, is it working now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking of the history of this Deal, that's a far cry from Hale Field that was right where uh, Sentinel High School is now in that area. And, uh, and there's been, what's this, is the second airport out there and uh, it's probably about the third or fourth for Missoula. So it's, uh, it'd be nice to have a historical story 
put together on that because uh, Old Hale Field was, was quite a place at one time. I flew out of there early in the, in the early 50s. Yeah, so oh. you're you're right. And that's one of the things that we recognize is that there's certainly been a lot of history. We actually hired a lady uh, probably early on in my tenure. So it's been a while ago now, but uh, where we tried to document all the history of the airport. And so we have we have a pretty good... Uh, I think chronological timeline of the airports. Obviously, the, this airport, the current location, opened in 1943. The first terminal building piece was built in 1948. We've actually added to it 11 different times over the course of uh, the history of the, of the, of the building. So, um, so there's a, you're right. There's a lot of history <clears throat> here at the airport, and of course, the Museum of Mountain Flying that's located here on the airport does a pretty good job of documenting some of the activity that happened here. You haven't mentioned public art. Yeah, so that's, a, and of course, an important part of the, of the project as well. And so um, if you, even today, if you look in the old terminal and our current terminal, we try to have a, a pretty good mix of, of art and, and the new terminal will be the same. We've been looking at display cases for, you know, sculptures and things of that nature. There'll be a lot of different things on the on the wall, the Harry Oyamas and the, and the things of that nature that we have. And so, yes, there will be plenty of, of art in the new facility as well. 